Hello, my name is Kyle Lajewski, Regional Business Manager with DMC. And today, I want to spend some time talking to you about mid-tier storage architectures. The way I want to walk through our conversation today is really to kind of talk through a traditional mid-tier storage architecture and how it compares to what EMC recently introduced in our next generation Clarion CX4 storage architecture. And more importantly, as we walk through these differences, I want to walk through the five key differentiators that really is catapulting CX4 to the stature it has today, where it continues to be the industry's number one mid-tier storage platform with over 300,000 units in production today across all Clarion models. So the first place I'd like to start is really kind of the architecture as we know it today. From a core brains perspective, we really see most of these units being manufactured with a 32-bit operating system leveraging some type of dual-core processors, a moderate amount of memory, and on the back end, some combination of both fiber channel and ATA disk subsystems. On the front end, we oftentimes see an embedded I.O., which really drives the customer to make a decision between either fiber channel or iSCSI connectivity. Now, I want to walk through some of the innovation that the CX-4 has brought to this mid-tier storage architecture. And I first want to start with the actual core brains of the unit itself. And the fact that we built the new CX-4 platform all off a 64-bit operating system and it leveraged multi-core processors. With this new architecture, we're seeing 2x the performance and 2x the scale, upwards of 960 drives in the largest CX-4 model. The second thing that we've really changed here is the amount of memory and the amount of cache for better performance for most of our applications. Next, we really look at the front end and how we're connecting our applications. Again, traditionally we saw an embedded I.O. on the front end, which really didn't give us a lot of flexibility on the front end. EMC has integrated what we are now calling our UltraFlex technology, which really is a modular I.O. front end. It gives me the ability to slide in and slide out modules on the front, giving me the ability to consolidate both fiber channel and iSCSI. In addition to whichever protocol may be next coming down the line, whether it's 8 gig fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet, whichever the protocol may be, whatever protocol is coming down the line, this will support that by, again, simply swapping in or swapping out these ultra-flex I.O. modules on the front end. Great innovation so far, but really we haven't even talked about the back-end disk subsystem, which adds a lot of innovation that the market really hasn't seen today. As you may expect, we're going to continue to leverage both fiber channel and ATA drives on the back-end. However, we have introduced the advent of flash technology in the mid-tier platform with our uh, Clarion CX4 line. As you may recall, we've done this on the enterprise space and our high-end platforms that have now integrated this after we've tried and true and proven this architecture into the mid-tier here in flash technology. On the other end here of the ATA spectrum, we've actually now also integrated a low-power ATA drive, or an ATA drive that spins at about 5,400 RPMs, reducing the required energy efficiency or energy power to consume those high-capacity, high-density type drives. In addition to creating a low power ATA drive, we've also integrated the ability to spin these drives down or to put them to sleep when they're not in use. In addition to some of the power savings here, we've also integrated the ability to do virtual provisioning or thin provisioning or allocate storage on demand, another key innovation on the mid-tier platform. And we've also integrated the ability to do adaptive cooling or spin down cooling on our cooling fans. So in the event that the array does not need all resources for cooling purposes, we can actually slow down the spin of those fans, further, consume, further preserving our energy consumption. So as you can see, a lot of innovation in the mid-tier platform, but I really want to spend the second half of our conversation today walking through the key benefits to our customer base and why the Clarion CX-4 has really taken a huge share of market in only the first few weeks that it's been out. The first thing is really around total cost of ownership. As I mentioned, in restructuring the brains here, we've given ourselves 2x the ability to scale and to perform. We've also integrated some new innovation as far as investment protection is concerned with this UltraFlex I.O. module, ensuring that you have support for the protocols today 
and the protocols tomorrow to ensure maximum consolidation on this single platform. We've continued the legacy Clarion innovation with our data in place upgrades, or the ability to upgrade throughout the CX4 line and to cross generationally upgrade between Clarion platforms and still leverage the initial investment made in capacity or in disk. And lastly, we've really driven a lot of innovation in and around our utilization rates. The CX4 platform typically experiences somewhere in the neighborhood of about 70% utilization. And when compared to a lot of competitive platforms out there that see somewhere between 30 and 40% utilization, we really are driving a lot more bang for the buck on the Clarion platform than we're seeing in competitive models. And again, that has a lot to do with how we lay out our operating systems, our hot sparing schemes, and how we lay out RAID and protection schemes. The second point is really around energy efficiency. We've mentioned flash drive technology, which what we're seeing in tests and in production, a 30x increase in performance and a 98% reduction in power and cooling. A huge energy innovation on flash technology. I spoke briefly about our low power SATA drives, which translates into a 32% power savings when implementing low power SATA compared to traditional SATA. I also had mentioned our ability to spin down. So in the event that we have archive or backup to disk capacity that's not being used at certain times throughout the day, we can spin those drives down, eliminating the consumption of power for those particular drives. And again, our adaptive cooling from a fan perspective is going to continue to drive energy savings for this overall platform. The fourth point is really around security. And this is where you see EMC's breadth and strength as a true information infrastructure provider. We spend over $7 billion in research and development over the past few years and a, and a similar type investment in the number of acquisitions that we've made, upwards of 35 today. Some of those key acquisitions have really driven innovation to our security platforms, specifically our acquisition of RSA, where we have integrated Envision to do automated log management that plugs in to this particular um, storage uh, appliance as well. Our ability to do key management and secure ID is going to allow us to really implement a uh, security plan for data at rest and also data at motion. The security plans of the past where we just protected the perimeter really don't suffice today. We need to protect the core information itself and really drive an information-centric security plan. And finally is around the innovation of VMware. Obviously we're seeing massive VMware adaption. Uh, adoption across the board and with EMC having acquired VMware about three years ago today we're seeing a lot of that R&D closely integrated whereas when we look at this platform we're seeing again some very unique innovation specific to VMware first all protocols from a connectivity standpoint for anything I may want to do with VMware we also look at 2x of scale and performance that's going to give me the scale I need as I continue to virtualize many of my applications this platform also provides the industry's first end-to-end -end quality of service manager by leveraging VMware's DRS at the application or at the VM level and EMC's Navisphere quality of service manager at the array or at the storage level, giving me the ability to set priority to particular applications based on their relevance to my business at a given time in the day. For example, giving Oracle or SQL preference over backup to disk during production hours. And lastly, we really see a lot of innovation from uh, our disaster recovery business continuance portfolio. Integrated in the CX4 platform is EMC's RecoverPoint software, which allows me to do both local replication for snaps and clones, in addition to remote replication while leveraging continuous data protection, or CDP type backup recovery. When we integrate RecoverPoint with VMware Site Recovery Manager, we have the industry's simplest business continuance disaster recovery plan out there today. Finally, the millions of dollars that we spend year in and year out with Microsoft and Oracle guarantee that from a reference architecture and white paper standpoint that these platforms are both interoperable and optimized to work with all of your mission critical applications. With that being said, I really appreciate your time and I hope this is an informative overview of mid-tier storage architecture how the CX4 next generation architecture compares, and some of the key advantages to you, the customer. If you'd like more information, please go to emc.com or reach out to your local EMC account executive. Thank you.